Good evening. This is Jason Wright from Marvel Magazine, and this is the fourth annual reading of The Lonely Boy on Christmas. It's my Christmas gift to all my friends and family at Oddball Magazine. Uh, every poet has a place here. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and please be kind next year. <laughs> there we go. There once was a town that seemed that was always cold. Even when it was warm, it still was always cold. The people were mean. The people weren't green. The people weren't clean. They all had forgotten their dreams and no one could sleep. Not even sheep could make them dream. They all had forgot their meaning of what it meant to be free. They lived their lives as shadows. They lived in poor man castles. Some were drunk and staggered and some were slaves in shackles. They all had forgotten what once was their motto, to live in darkness you can never cast a shadow, and in the darkness shadows never follow. And when the light shines from the sun in the seasons, whether frostbitten hands or those wearing mittens, the sun always shined on the ones who asked for wisdom, and one did, the lonely boy on Christmas. And this lonely boy just wanted one thing for Christmas, a dog or a kitten wrapped up with a ribbon, a bright blue ribbon. If he had a dog, he could pet him with his mittens and watch him chase pigeons and play fetch with the children. But it never happened. No gifts were given to him on this Christmas, or any Christmas. There he sat in the town of castles and shadows where the cold seemed to sting everyone and everything. And he began to reminisce of his family's last Christmas. The last time he was given a kiss on his head and that warm feeling he had and the last words ever said by his dad. You must live by yourself and we can no longer take care of you. And he said to them, I'm just a boy. What do you expect me to do? But his father and mother, they didn't love one another and they didn't really mean to say what they said. So one day they both got into their cars and left. But before they left, they both kissed him both on the cheek and said, I'm sorry, son, that we have to leave. Here are the keys. This is your very own castle. And never leave. Always stay in the shadows. We will always be with you, but we must leave, and we hope for your forgiveness. And then, like that, they had left the lonely boy on Christmas. Part 2. At the same time, there was a young widow who always sat by the window with a sad glow waiting for her husband to come home. What? You're not record. Is it not recording anymore? Oh, really? Oh, damn. Part two. At the same time, there was a young widow who always sat by the window with a sad glow, waiting for her husband to come home. He and her also lived in this world, the world that was mentioned in part one, a world of no fun where no one could smile in fear of being stung because the cold was too cold and some were too poor to buy coats. And besides, the castles were hidden by shadows and moats protected by ghosts. But still there was hope that her love would come home and every day she wrote from a journal that was given to her from her husband who had disappeared in the cold of the winter and made her from married and happy to a way too young widower. Her name was Rosaline and she was only 18 when she found the man of her dreams. But one day he left to go to the store and was never seen any more. And people had said that he had gone missing in a cold storm on a frosty Thanksgiving. And they stopped searching after a few weeks because no one could survive out in those cold on those peaks. But Rosaline never stopped looking out that window till one day it started to snow. And then it suddenly stopped. And out from the sky, an angel just dropped. Part 3. Before I tell you how the angel dropped and why the snow stopped, we must go back to the spot where the boy sat patiently waiting for the day when his family would come back and how all he wanted was that dog for Christmas, a little dog wrapped up with a bright blue ribbon, but really, gifts were not on his wish list, just a little slice of happiness outside of all that darkness. That day, the boy decided to leave. He said to himself, I'm going to get a tree, so he left his castle and stepped out of the shadows and headed to the forest outside of the meadow and began a long walk out of the darkness and into an even darker forest. He could have went left and went towards the shore. He decided to go north and ventured forth towards the forest and the trees and the bright north star. He knew little of where he was, but it was better than where he would be. And besides, it was Christmas. He wanted a tree. Before he left, he dressed in his warmest clothes, hat and coat and scarf to protect his nose. And the only possession he had with him was a backpack of provisions and a compass and a map. And off he went and took his first step out of the darkness. While in that same town, a widower wept. Part 4 Oh, where did he go? Got lost in the snow, she sang to herself while she sat by the window. Oh, where did he go, and when will he return to give me his love I so desperately yearn? She repeated these lines like she was hypnotized. 
the saddest moment in a beautiful life. She was only 23 when he said goodbye, went on to that cold November winter and was never seen alive. But keep faith, good reader, a good love never dies. Oh, where did he go? When will he return? Why did you leave me? It wasn't your turn, she sang. This song in mourning, she sang it still mourning, and that was when she realized that her eyes were not blind. In her heart, she believed he was alive. At the same time, she sang by her window in that empty house. The compass was pointing, telling the boy to go south, but the map said that the meadow was the way to go, but his heart told him to follow the star, and into the dark he ventured in, to the deep forest where the trees lied therein. Part 5 well, dear reader, you must be weary of me, so let me tell you how the boy found his tree, and also a brand new family. It starts where we left, with the boy's lonely trek, and ends, well, we're not quite there yet. So the boy began his climb into that deep forest, while the angels sang to him this simple chorus, Follow the star, son, follow the star, follow the star, son, follow the star. Yeah, the boy, the boy was lonely and scared for sure, but in his head and heart he was strong and secure. People would leave him, for that he was sure, but never his family. That scar was the worst. His head began to hurt, but before the tears started to fall, he took a step, and all of a sudden he was not by himself. While he was down and thinking about life, he somehow had wandered under the thinnest of ice. Part 6 Oh, reader, oh me, oh my, what did this boy do on that thinnest of ice? He walked oh so carefully, and he could hear the ice creak, and then there was the crack in the ice he could see. He thought to himself, dang, if I wasn't thinking about all my problems, I might have seen this coming and I could have done something. Instead of being stuck where I am, and then something happened. The ice cracked and splintered and cracked and splintered and cracked. And the ice fell underneath his feet. And the boy was suddenly over his head. And while under the coldest degrees, he began to see Christmas wasn't about getting presents or trees. It was about being happy. He was under the water, gasping for air trying desperately to be freed from a horrible death indeed. Then at this moment, a hand reached out to him, and now enters the man Jim, the widower's husband. Part 7 Hey, kid! Hey, kid! Can you hear me? Grab my hand! Hey, kid! Hey, kid! Can you hear me? Grab my arm! I'll pull you in! That was the voice of the widower's husband. All the boy could hear was a muffled sound, but saw the arm and tried desperately to get out. He grabbed the strange hand that had come from above, and Jim pulled him out with the strongest of tugs. Jim pulled the boy off of the ice and made sure that he was all right. Can you hear me, kid? Can you hear me? But the boy was barely breathing, cold and shivering. What could be done to save the lonely boy on Christmas? Jim started a fire with some sticks around him and hoped and prayed that something could heal him. But as the fire grew stronger, soon the boy breathed in and looked into the eyes of the man that saved him. And at this very moment, the widower was sleeping and dreaming what seemed to be the same thing. It was about a boy who fell on a dark night of the thinnest of ice, and her husband was surely alive and saved this boy's life. Part 8 The widower hadn't left her house since her husband had disappeared, but she had to leave. Her heart was telling her so, that she had to go out of the darkness and back into that snow. And as she left, she took a deep breath, and that was when she realized for the first time herself that the darkness she lived in, this town of castles and shadows, there were more places to see, like the place in her dream. She visioned a stream, lit up by a bright star, and there she ventured out into the dark. And there she sang, My heart tells me to follow my dreams, and I will sing this song until he hears me. So she began singing, My heart tells me to follow my dreams, and I will sing till my angel hears me. And just like that, the star lit up the whole place. And though they were far apart, she could see his face. By the place in her dream, right by the stream, where she would find her gym, and where she found me. Part 9. Yes, it was me. I was the lonely boy on Christmas. But now that I have grown, I am no longer alone. My family, Rosaline, and my father, Jim, we live outside of the darkness where the shadows live. And though you must find your own way and sometimes follow that dream to get the biggest tree or... PlayStation 3, all you really want is a good family and maybe a dog, like the dog that I have, but really in the end, a mom and a dad and people that love you, believing that the right star will shine above you. So there you have it. 
Merry Christmas to all of you and all of yours. Happy Holidays. May love and light unlock all your doors. Merry Christmas. From Jason Wright, Editor, Oddball Magazine. And there you have it. That is Lonely Boy on Christmas. And thank you for listening to my song. Um, I mean, it's more like a poem that I wrote a long time ago, and it means a real lot to me. So, you know, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. May the Force be with you. You know? May love and light unlock all your doors. Peace.